So just to back up there, uh, we're going into automation. We're going to automate a parameter on our track. Okay. And uh, so we're going to set our region to loop for eight bars, which we've already done. And then we're going to put an EQ channel on this strip. And we can put the EQ anywhere over here. You'll see the synthesizers there. And then the next thing in our signal flow, remember our signal flow, we went from the synthesizer to a plug-in. Okay, so we're down here. And we're going to put an EQ on that plug-in right here. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to turn on the high cut filter on that EQ. So I'm going to come up here. And the high cut filter is this guy right here. A lot of people missed this last class right here. Make sure you got that on. You should see some pink. It doesn't matter where it is right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep that open. We're just going to put it down kind of low here so we can keep an eye on it. Okay. So we've got that EQ installed, inserted. We've got the high pass filter coming in there. Pause just for a second for people. And then we're going to click this all-important button. You've probably looked at this button many times and wondered what it's for. You might be thinking the same thing on that one, which we'll get to next week. Okay. Uh, right here, this is the automation button. Go ahead and click it. And right away, you'll see that your regions get uh, blacked out a little bit, and you see this thing called volume. Don't touch anything yet. Click on volume, and what we're going to do is we're going to navigate up to that channel EQ, and we're going to go over to the high cut frequency and select that bad boy right there. And we click anywhere on the track and we'll get a line. And watch what happens if I click and drag that line up and down. Look what's happening to my EQ. It's moving with it. See that? I have control of that. And watch what happens if I click here and here and now I pull that down. And I hit play and now my EQ will filter. By the way, I'm going to put this back at the 165 decibel or beats per minute. Goes way down there and comes up. It's doing it automatically for me. This is like what a LFO would have do. We just don't need an LFO to do it. We can actually map in the specific spots. Because then I'm like, oh, I don't want it to go quite that low. Let me just go to right here. And I want it to go a little bit higher. Okay. Very precise control. Uh, do that, and when you're done, will you put your flags up? Okay, so now we just automated a, uh, a, a plug-in. Now we want to go in and actually automate the synthesizer itself. So just to pop out to our little drawing here we were looking at, we have this automation. We had automated the EQ. We're going to pop up one level and now automate a little bit on that synthesizer. Okay? And basically, it's the same thing as us messing around in the synthesizer with our hand, we're just going to have the computer do it for us. Okay, okay so how do we do that? Uh, I want you to go ahead and turn off that EQ right here, the power button, just turn it off. Get that EQ out of our way. Okay, And then if you... Uh, <clears throat> uh, we're going to go into RetroSynth. We just need to set a little bit of uh, uh, parameters on this. Make sure your LFO is on and your LFO or your filter is on right here and your LFO is set to zero right here. And then let's set this filter envelope to about 0.5 right there. That's about all we need to do. And what we're going to automate is actually this filter envelope right here, the attack portion. So the sound will go like this. Oh, that's not good. Hear that sound? Have it come in a little bit later. So right here, the filter is open all the way, and the sound starts. If you move it later, lower, later it takes longer for it to open, right? Okay. Yeah. So see if you can't set your parameters in there somewhere, right about in that area, and we're going to start messing with this. Okay. I'm going to actually turn. I'm going to turn the decay down a fair amount too. Right about there. So that's that's probably where we want to be. So an attack of, let's say, uh, 0.43 and a decay of about 6 milliseconds. I'm pretty short there. I'm going to go ahead and close that because now I'm going to automate. Actually, no, I can keep that open. We can watch it. We can watch it down there. I'm just going to make this smaller so we can see it. The rest of the screen. Okay. So 
Set this down right about there. Sorry, I know it's a little low on the board. Okay. To add a second automation parameter, I can just click this arrow right here. And it, it will extend on that track, that same, you see these are the same loops right here. I can go in now, and if I click into Retro Synth, Filter Envelope, Filter Envelope Attack. I click that, and I can now draw some lines. This one can get a little out of control, so I'd stay between 20 and 1300 milliseconds. I'm at, at uh, 43 there. give myself a couple little ramps here. Now, what I would suggest doing on this one is making your ramps tighter than the other one. So that maybe the top one has smooth changes and this one's more immediate. Maybe only lasting a bar or so. That's just so you can tell the difference between the two. Now I can see right here my attack moving, right? And I can hear it when it's when it's It's sort of ironic because it sounds darker when this goes up, but that's because it's taking longer for that filter to open up and let all the high frequencies through. I can increase the resonance a little bit here. And then once I've done that, I can turn the EQ back on. I can come over here and now they're both going at the same time. Let me go back to my EQ. Oops. Where's my EQ? Did I delete my EQ? I'm sorry, it looks like I deleted... Not sure what happened there. Uh, channel EQ, high cut frequency. I guess I, I deleted it all, that's right, I was showing you how to delete these. Okay, so I have this little arrow right here. See that arrow right there? The white arrow right there. Okay, see if you can get to this point where you have both of them going at the same time. And I can see my EQ moving. Actually, there's a little preview of my EQ right here, moving with the blue line. And I can see my attack changing there. Go ahead and try that. 